Hey everybody, it's Eric Low, one of the MC of Stage 2 today. Uh, did you finish your great meal during the uh, lunch break? Now, we are still in Stage 2 for the Architecting API Strat at API Days with uh, Virtual Conference. Yes. First, we will have uh, Jason Esley who who is solution consultant at New Wernick. Wernick, uh, how's, how are you doing today, Jason? Can you hear me right now? I'm good. I'm good, yeah. Eric. Uh, how are you doing today? Yeah, fine. It's great for, for the conference, the topics of conference. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your time to share your knowledge to us in the API Days conference. Yeah. The topic that Jason will present is Death Fox is Dead. Well, it seems an uh, attractive topic for me. Okay, it's your time right now. Yes, yes, thank you, Eric. Uh, yeah, I'm sure everyone uh, listening will be very interested to know uh, what DevOps is like today, right? So today I'm just going to cover uh, you know, where DevOps has, has started and, and where, where it is now. And as the title suggests, right, uh, DevOps is there. First of all, I just want to state that this is just my uh, personal opinion right it doesn't reflect the the statement of the company it's just my personal opinion and and just wanted to share with the team here at the api days conference right uh my a bit of background a bit about myself uh, i was born in singapore born and raised in singapore and i work with uh, customers like all over the world uh, started in the monitoring industry uh and then moved to new relic uh about a year and a half ago right and I've been working with a lot of cloud native and enterprise customers uh, that are trying to implement new relic uh, for their environments. So yeah, let me uh, just start by uh, saying a, a eulogy to DevOps, right? Uh, dear DevOps, you, know, you brought teams together that really never saw eye to eye together. You increase efficiency, you know, even by up to 3,000 times. You, know, you help change how software is made and delivered. You should ask the true meaning of collaboration. However, all good things had to come to an end. Right, they may be gone, but the spirit of your collaboration and efficiency lasts forever. You won't be forgotten. So that is uh, my eulogy to DevOps. I know I should be very black uh, today and be all sad, but uh, it's not all that bad, right? It's not all that bad. And uh, it's what you're about to hear next. Like, um, Let's just go through the life of DevOps, right? Uh, you know, as he started where a guy named Patrick Dubois uh, and Andrew Clay, they met at the conference, uh, in the Agile conference back in the early 2007, right? And late 2008. And they wanted to come up with something uh, a bit more Agile, right? At, at that time, you know, Operations were doing their own thing, development was doing their own thing. And they wanted something called like agile system administrators. Right. So they wanted that, but it didn't have a nice uh hook or name to it. So they actually came out with the conference called DevOps Days. Right. So it was actually the conference that <coughs> started first before the DevOps uh uh mindset and and, and the, the started to spread. So they actually came up with this conference and it was through this conference that there were not that many people, uh, I think it was 60 people, but they came from all over the world, like, you know, from Australia uh, to visit that, that in-person conference, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope some of you remember having in-person conferences, uh, right? Uh, it was quite good to meet people, like, share ideas. Uh, and then it started with that 60 people conference, and it started to spread and spread uh, from there, right? So if it's a great idea, I think it will, it will start spreading. And, you know, started adopting by companies all over the world, like IBM. And then Gene Kim released a book called The Phoenix Project. I think that's quite a uh, really instrumental book for, for companies. And, and that really explained the, the challenges between dev and ops, right? And it uh, allowed companies to, to adopt DevOps a bit more, more, more effectively. But there were some challenges, right, to DevOps, like, uh, as as time grew, right, more teams needed to collaborate. Right? It wasn't just about dev and ops and building a product. 
like the entire company, right? So yeah, there were certain conflicts that DevOps had with parts of the business, right? Some of the, the examples is like DevOps uh, really evangelizes transparency. So like everyone should know about everything and should have access to all the information. All right, so then uh, it came into conflict with security. Security doesn't want everyone to know everything, right? People want to know it on the S per need to know basis. Uh, everything access needs to be logged. So that came some conflicts. Uh, so some people thought it was a good idea to maybe merge security in and call it a like DevSecOps. But then security might say, hey, we did, we did this and this uh, solution uh, for security. And then maybe the business might say, hey, look, uh, we can't spend that much on, on security. Uh, you know, there's not much value. So business wanted to get in uh, with, the, with the DevOps. And so some of them call it this DevOps. Right, uh, just to align it better with the business, like to add more business value. Uh, but what we're seeing here is actually um, the underlying team, team is like people need to collaborate, right? You need different parts of the business uh, to get things going. While dev and ops works great to build product, uh, it takes a whole whole village, right? a whole organization to, to be involved, right? You need security, you need uh, the business to start to align. Yeah, I have this funny thing here, like what happens if every department comes together, then will we have like biz, dev, sec, ops, marketing, sales, HR, fin, and then we go on forever. Like, yeah, so at some point, you know, DevOps started to to show some uh, clicks, right? And, and it couldn't really uh, use that same model and we can't just keep adding more and more like businesses in and like, how are they going to work together? So a new a new way of thinking is required, right? To, to get everyone on, on board. Right. Uh. Yeah. So, what do we now do now? Right. That uh, DevOps no longer works. Right. So the like I said, like the future is collaboration. Right. It's not just uh, Dev and Ops. It's about everyone coming together uh to solve a common goal or on a common vision. Right. Uh. And whenever uh we see like another department comes in and, and tries to collaborate. Uh, it does unlock a lot of hidden value, right? Like for example, when this and dev and ops come come together, you start to have a bit more alignment with the business, and you can maybe prioritize what's important to the business, what is a bit more impactful, and then you can add more value by by uh, prioritizing that. So th whenever another group comes in, uh, it does help a lot, a lot of hidden value and a lot of innovation. But of course, there are also challenges when more people uh, start to collaborate, right? Uh, a recent study showed that when there are more people collaborating, the number of ideas produced actually decreases, right? Uh, so the number of like possible ideas uh, tends to decrease because a lot of people have different views and opinions. And uh, it's good to get quality ideas, but you won't get much quantity uh, ideas when more and more people collect. So that's something that is a bit counterintuitive, right? When uh, we think that, oh, with more people collaborating, we should have more ideas. Uh, but actually, no, because maybe business might have a different idea and say, like, oh, that idea does not work because it doesn't align with us, right? So that's something that uh, we should all think of with uh, when we collaborate. When you invite more people in, it actually reduces the number of ideas, but it does create maybe one or two quality ideas that you can then work on. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please? Yeah, sorry, that one might silly. Uh, yeah, collaboration involving customers, right? So it's not just uh internally. A lot of times, sometimes the business might have an idea or the marketing might have an idea, but it's not what the the customer wants, right? So, uh, this is by LinkedIn. He came up with a with a term called DevX, right? Uh, and there's this article like moving from DevOps to DevX, uh, that they they posted. So it's basically about having no operations. Like a lot of the operations are, are automated, right? And uh, there's this quote that says, innovation in silos is not innovation. And I really like that quote because when I was uh, like traveling as a consultant and going to different companies, like sometimes I would stay there for a week and work with different departments. And what I realized was every department was trying to optimize just for their, their department. But whenever something was not working or it couldn't work well and that evolved like, oh, that was this department that is sending us the wrong information or another department is not not uh, doing their work, they would not 
uh, voice it out. They just keep it amongst themselves and they try to collect it internally. Like, oh, maybe the data from this uh, department is wrong. We won't ask them to collect the depart their, their data. We just massage the data that they send to us so that it works for us. So they're just innovating within their department or their silo. And that's actually, you know, like, like, like this article, it's not really true innovation, right? Because you actually need to, to collaborate with different uh, people to, to actually solve the common goal. Like once you start to, to bring people together, uh, and in this case, they're bringing customers together, right? The customers are sending feedback and it goes straight into the developers, right? So the moment they make a change to the UI or, or some change, the customers can send feedback and the developers can see that they can change it automatically. So we actually cut down a lot of processes like the, the business analysts or all those uh, job functions. Uh, they're sort of automated away right, into the developers where the developers actually make those decisions. So that's one approach uh, by, by, by LinkedIn. Uh, there are quite a few approaches where um, we have a lot of uh, companies moving away from um, this purely a DevOps uh, culture, right? So if you want to want to start collaborating, collaborating uh, within your, your company, there are a few things that you have to know. It's not, not that easy, right? With some companies, uh, the structure, it makes it a bit difficult. Uh, one of the, the, the key things that uh, Gene Kim, uh, he, he mentioned in his book called The Unicorn Project, it's called The Lunch Factor. Like how many people do you need to take out to lunch uh, to get something done, right? Or to start, even start collaborating, right? Let's say you have an idea, you want to collaborate with uh, another department. How many, this was before the pandemic, right? Uh, how many people do you have to like take out to lunch, explain what you want? And then maybe that your boss has to go and talk to the boss of another department, explain what they want at their level. And then before that, someone below is assigned to work with you. And then you have to, to speak to them to collaborate. So maybe four or five lunches uh, before you can actually start collaborating, right? And when you start collaborating, you start to see that there's a lot of friction between the, the departments, right? Especially in the larger organization. And yeah, so I, I also came up with the Zoom factor right? now with the pandemic. Like how many Zoom calls do you need to start collaborating? Right? If it's just one or zero, then that's ideal. And then you can start. But if you need to make five or six Zoom calls like with different parties, then maybe you should start working on reducing that Zoom factor, right? Instead of just starting to collaborate because there are a lot of friction uh, within the business uh, that is preventing that, that collaboration. Yeah, that, that's just some uh, thoughts like uh, and ideas that, that came came to mind. Uh, this was one example that I worked with uh, a customer on, like how to, to improve uh, customer experience um, for them, right? Uh, so this was a, a, a large retail store and a lot of seniors were 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 coming to the store and they didn't want to, to go online. So, so there's a, a concept that we came up with for them was to have the, the customer service in store let them guide them to use the, the 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 service or the app within the store, right? So feedback from the customer service that can be sent uh, with the development, like or they, once they can see the person using the, the app in real time and they can note down the feedback, uh, send it to the that same session or that the user is using, and they can send send the feedback, right? So when when, when customers come in, uh, you're not only looking with dev and ops, right? you're having a like, true collaboration from the customer feedback, you're having uh, data from the analytics, you are doing like A-B testing, you can change different views, and then uh, you're able to see uh, the developers, like are able to see all of this information in real time, right? Uh, so the, the, the ops, are fully automated away. The, the business analysts are, are all abstracted away where the customers are just giving feedback and the developers can, can automatically see that in real time. Even the if there's UX team, you can see the session replays, like how the users are interacting with the website, you know, where they're clicking, where the heat maps are. And in real time, they can, they can make decisions uh, accordingly. So every time they're changing the user interface or they're testing a new interface, they're getting that feedback and they're able to, to iterate, right? So that's uh that's the way the way uh a lot of fast agile companies uh, start to work. Right? It's more adaptive right, to what the, the requirements are. 
right? So these are, are some effective outcomes that we work with some of our customers where, you know, the dashboard, we created some dashboards around uh, what they wanted to see, like maybe the, the VIPs that are experiencing issues or you not know, the, the transactions on the website, how many customers are using. With New Relic, there's a lot we can do. Uh, so we have a lot of workshops to bring people in uh, where it's not just dev and ops, right? Uh, there's a lot of people involved. Right. Uh, yeah. So if you want to learn more about uh, new new relic and some of the ways where we're bringing not dev and ops together, uh, my colleague uh, Stuart Xiao will be having a session tomorrow, uh, a, a workshop, and where you can all bring in different people. Right. Uh, we when I conducted this workshop with uh, some of our customers in the product or business and dev and ops in SRE, like it was very very fruitful. To bring in to get some of these like outcomes that we have, right? Uh, because the data are coming from different sources. It could be from the business, like from sales, Salesforce, or it could be from your application itself, right? Of you know, or your APIs, your or your anything that's coming in. Uh, all of, a lot of that uh, we can present that in. Uh, and Stuart Shaw will have a workshop tomorrow. But yeah, before I I go I I, I go on like. I'll probably open up to the floor uh, for any Q&A. Uh, any questions? Uh, anyone? Hi, Jason. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think that uh, collaboration with all parties, all teams, and all people is our ultimate achievement, I can say achievement yeah. for, for within a company. But if a company doesn't apply, let's say at this moment, they doesn't apply, DevOps in their deployment working model, and they try. To, they want to have some changes right now. Do you think yeah. additional DevOps is the first step for them as a in, in, initial change, or they should apply the, uh, the ultimate collaboration directly? Which one you prefer? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. That, that's a good question. Uh, if you look at a lot of companies have problems implementing DevOps because it's not uh, inclusive. Right. So, for example, DevOps wants everyone to have access to data, but security team does not want that. So, a lot of challenges uh, that I see with companies uh, trying to adopt DevOps is it's not all inclusive. Uh, so, one of the things that Gartner brought up is a bimodal uh, model. So, they, they basically carve out a part of the company to work in a different mode and then implement DevOps. So, that's one way of doing it the Gartner bimodal way. Another way is uh, to start collaborating is to think about the lunch factor and zoom factor, right? If you start to, to reduce the zoom factor and lunch factor, then you can start to have the true collaboration. And you can just go for the true collaboration uh, at, from the start, like instead of trying to implement DevOps and encounter all these frictions with other parts of the business, like just go in for the, like, like uh, one of my colleagues say, uh, aim for the stars and then reach the moon. And so sometimes uh, you have to aim high and then you can get where you want to be. Okay. And yeah. what's the, I can say, what is the gap or the challenges if a team wants to improve themselves from traditional DevOps or DevSecOps to the collaboration? Yeah. Is it any challenge that you, you can teach us or you can share to us? Yeah, the, the challenge is getting people together, right? So uh, the initial hurdle of bringing people together, especially in silos, is, is quite difficult. So uh, setting the, it has to come from the top, right? Uh, whether this collaboration is uh, welcome. And and uh, getting your lunch factor reduced is probably the first step, right? Uh, how, how many people do you need to talk to to, to start this collaboration? Right, that, that should be the first question. Uh, that you should be asking, uh, right? Instead of trying to just go for the full collaboration, think about are we in the right environment for us to start collaborating? Okay, uh, there's a question from the stage chat. Is it better only for the front end teams to adopt the depth ex experience, depth, depth experience? Uh, the, the front end team normally starts uh, uh adapting it first because they are the external facing and that's where a lot of change and and uh is happening right and a lot of value can be there right so it's good good to start start from there 
uh, the closer to the customer you are, that's mm. where you can add more value uh, with the changes that, that are happening. So that's normally a, start, a good starting point um, to, to get the customers uh, involved. Okay. Oh, thanks for your sharing today. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thanks for your sharing today. And Thank you. yeah, it's a good topic for me because I know lots about the DevOps, but it's the first time to know more about the cooperation, the difference of cooperation and the DevOps. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. You're welcome. Nice Thank thing. you. Yeah.